So, uh, this is a video about your Vim info uh, and why it can be problematic. There's two ways. The thing I'm doing, the reason I'm doing this video is I actually got burned by it this morning because I had done a system reinstall and uh, somehow I had uh, the improper permissions on my Vim info file. So that's one of the problems we're going to talk about. But there's actually two main problems with Vim info that I want to cover today. Um, first of all, what is Vim info? So this is how we're going to do this. We'll talk about what Vim info is, uh, how it helps you and how it can really mess you up when it gets out of whack. So what is Vim info? Vim info is this file, which I'll give away. It's in your home directory and it allows, see, I can't read it because I've turned it off for temporary for reasons. Um, but it's this file that lives in your home directory that contains pretty much the state of your Vim and everything that you've cut and paste, uh, where you were, uh, it doesn't hold your spelling stuff that goes in a different file, but it's a lot of stuff about your session. And this is the magic that Vim adds to VI that allows you to preserve state between files. So for example, if you've used Vim, you can copy uh, using the regular copy or yank or whatever, and then you can go paste into another file and you're fine unless you're not and we're going to talk about that um, and that's really cool I mean it gets by some of the frustration of VI which would always put you on a, a new line every time when you open it and if you're in and out of a file that's super annoying that's why I did this today and uh, the other problem is that uh, uh, it keeps track of you know your cut and paste buffers and if you don't have that with VI I'll do it today but you the the, the traditional way to copy to stuff think from one file to another would be to just edit the file let's say I want to copy uh, oh gosh just this section so I'm, I like my bang which is my exclamation point exclamation point uh, left curly selects the whole section and then I'm going to write and W uh, to temp um, whatever Okay, so now I have a file called temp whatever, and if I'm uh, editing, editing a file, uh, temp, I guess temp hey, then I can actually pull in the file with colon r slash temp whatever, and I get the file. So in VI land, that's what you do, and that's how I've been trained. That if you're under a system that doesn't have Vim, you need to know how to do that. Most have Vim these days, but even if they only have VI, that's how that's the best way to to transfer data between. Uh, two, uh, two files. Uh, there is no Vim info. There's no sense of state or cut and paste between um, two sessions. So that's how you do that. And that's always what you can fall back on. But if you'll notice, um, uh, I don't know if you noticed which line I was on, but when I opened VimRC again, look what it did. It put me at the top of the file. Well, I was actually down here in line seven or so, and it, re it, it didn't put me in the right place. Okay, so let's let's deal with that quite, that problem first. So if for any reason at all, and I have not been able to determine the main reason that my Vim info lost its uh, read access, but it could be because you know you ran as root and sudo or whatever. I'm not fully aware of all the reasons, um, but if for some reason you lose read access on that Vim RC on Vim info file, and here's the permissions dash ls space dash l or ll if you have that alias set you see that there's there's this file with no permissions so you can't read it and you're kind of stuck because you know it's got a lot of great information in it this one does anyway and it can't access any of the data at all okay so it opens it up without any sign I can be down on the bottom line I'm on line 168 of this big long VimRC and now I try to reopen it and I'm back to line one how annoying is that well, you know, that's the life most VI people have learned to live with, but it's still annoying. Uh, and Vim info gets around that, but the way to fix that uh, is if I, all I have to do is give it read and write permissions. Well, let's, let's do one at a time, because it's possible, I don't know how, but you might lose write permissions. But in that case, you actually get a big, wonderful error. Uh, so we're going to schmod it, and we're going to add uh, readability to the file. So schmod plus r tilde slash dot vim info and then we'll check our permissions again with uh, ls space dash l and we see oops I added r to everything I probably don't want that so let's um, go ahead and remove I'm not gonna I refuse to use octal <laughs> I like octal but I just don't want to use it here so let's change that to be 
um, plus, let's just for the user, plus R. And I guess we'll have a video on permission some other day. But um, then if you look at this, you see there's R. Okay, well, what does that do? So let's let's go back and you, it's funny because I'm going to edit this file that I've been editing before and you'll notice it's going to think I was on a line different than I was. I was on the end of the line, but now when I edit the file, it puts me on line 32, which was, uh, oh, but I tried to save it. Do you see that error? Let's do that again. So if I try to save it, oh, wait, hey, you can't write your file, right? Okay, so... Um, it can't write the file so that's actually good let's go see why it thinks I'm on line 32 so we're gonna go to Vim info and look in here and it's lots of good stuff in here all the read write registries everything um, the version let's see there I think it's the one that uh, that's your search string history okay hmm I don't know where the line return is but it doesn't matter this is a big old buffer that's the VimRC of course which I pasted earlier uh, but somewhere in here is the line you were on. Uh, command line history. Let's see. Where is it? input line history? Well, just trust me, it's in here. <laughs> I don't know where. We'll find it another day. But you see, even that I can't. I can't edit the file. It doesn't save my history. So I get the warning. So the the conclusion here is you can't um, uh, see. You get you get an error if it's just right only. But let's fix that. Let's do our schmod again. Schmod. Uh, user plus right uh, and now we should be fine and when I edit uh, VimRC like we've been doing uh, you see that um, you know I can move around so let's see I'm gonna go to the line another line we're gonna talk about in a second let's think I can find it uh, Vim info so searching for Vim info slash is how I searched uh, so here's the line that I have in my VMRC that we're going to talk about next. But I'm on line 29 now when I close out uh, and I reopen, I should be on line 29. Yay, thanks. Everything is working good. So that's that's the first really weird quirk. So if for any reason you lose your permissions or your, your line numbers keep going to the, keeps jumping back to the beginning of the file and you're like, hey, I swear to I got this all working. Uh, it's not because it's not reading your VimRC, which is what I thought. It's because your Vim info is, can't be read. And so you need to go back and check on that. Um, all right. Second thing. Uh, so as you've seen, we've been cutting and pasting. Uh, I'll do it again. So we're going to take that, that line that we did. We cut and paste. And I'm going to do the same thing. Bang, left curly. That selects. I just use bang for everything. There's clearly lots and lots of other ways to do this. But I, I use the magic wands, which I'll have a video on all the time. And uh, I just take get rid of the magic wand in this case and write uh, the section to uh, uh, another, let's say. Oh, file exists. Okay, I get that too. I probably should turn it put on no clobber. So W exclamation point, since I must have used that file already, temp another, and there it goes ahead and makes it another file. All right. So, but the thing of it is, is I didn't even really need to do that, right? So I can actually just yank it. I can yank the thing. Y uh, left or er, was that right curly, and that says it got linked. It yanked 13 lines down here. You see this? 13 lines got yanked. So that's you know, about 13 lines, like here. All right. So. Now what? Um, let's go put them into another file. Uh, another one, I bet I got. And now if I just type P, it, it knows what to do. Okay, we're gonna delete this though. That, that worked properly, so no worries there. But here's where stuff gets really subtly scary and dangerous. Pay attention here, put your ears on. Um, when you're editing the VimRC, so this file has 168 lines. Um, if I am going to copy and paste the whole file, which is not uncommon, obviously you should just cop copy the, the just the file, just do CP or something. But let's say I just I had a line buffer that was huge. Let's say I had 168 lines, or you're refactoring, um, uh, you know, some code, and you you're putting markers and stuff like that, and you're, you know, you're putting putting things into different files, and you know, guys with VS Code people would would like be cut up copy and pasting with a mouse to do all that. And then in your case, you've got to use these commands, and you need to trust the registries are going to be big enough to do this. Without the VimRC line, that the Vim info line that you see here, um, you are not going to be able to do anything larger than 50. So, so let's watch what happens now. So if I try to copy, if I try to yank the whole file, so that'd be yank capital G, 168 lines yanked. So there you see 168 lines are yanked. 
And that's awesome, right? I got the whole file in one thing. Again, this isn't easier done with an MV or a CP from the command line, but still, you get the point. Now, I've got this nice, wonderful thing all queued up, and I can put it into another using Vim's info functionality. I can push P, and I get all 100. Nope, I only get 50 lines. You see that? I only got 50 more lines. That's a big problem. And if you haven't hit this problem yet, please be glad that you're not ever going to hit this problem. The reason that this is a problem is if you're not using version control, which you always should, of course, then you have no way to recover this. So let's say you, instead of yanking it out of the other file, which is, you know, uh, and you deleted it, which would, might be the thing to do so you can avoid redundancy, um, you've, you've actually just lost how many lines? Like 108 lines or so. So you know they're gone they're completely gone and there's no recovery there's no getting them back they're not saved anywhere they're just gone so and the culprit here is your vim info because because of you know size constraints on stuff i mean they're you know of that file your your vim info file is now not big enough to hold the type of lines and things you want to copy and paste Okay, so this is why you need to put this in. So there's this this gets around several problems uh, that to the limitations to the Vim info file. And these days, uh, bumping up these these maximums is fine. So the first one is you need to add, uh, and I don't I don't understand why the syntax is this way. It just is, um, but you need to add more registers. So if you do use a lot of registers, uh, markers and stuff, you might want to bump that number up, and that's a good number. Um, and uh, you, this this makes it so I have a maximum of a thousand lines. Now I know that I should never be cutting and pasting more than a thousand lines, right? If I'm doing that, I'm truncating a file, I'm copying the file and deleting everything off the end of it. I'm doing something else like that. So a thousand should be plenty. Fifty, however, is not big enough for most people. It's definitely not for the stuff I do. So and the size of the file. So the size is unrelated to how many lines. It's it's how big the file can be, you know, or your um, the registries or the things that you're copying. So you, once you add this, now it's not registered, so I have to reopen VI. And now I can go up here and do the same thing again. I'm going to yank the whole file all the way to the end. 168 lines yanked. Let's now edit our another two. Oops. Let's delete this first. Uh, I have to do it again then. So go back up in here, yank to L file, and go back into another two P for paste. And I have all 168 lines because I'm all happy now because I bumped up the size of my Vim info file. All right. So uh, three things we did. What is Vim info? Uh, how can you uh, get around a problem with it not remembering where you are? If that's a thing, check your permissions. And how to bump up the sizes of, the, of everything in Vim info so that you don't end up losing code because the default is 50 lines and you probably are going to do more than that so hopefully this video has been helpful if it has uh, like and subscribe join me on the stream and um, i'm going to start making them more frequently as soon as they hit me uh, it, there will be no particular order but i promise to link them together in some order on an outline in a blog post at some point all right thank you